with the Jibari with the Brain and Body Foundation, and this is your health in your hands. Now, if you were with us a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even last week, you were you must have witnessed Dr. Anand's fascinating presentation about stem cells and what the place they hold or the role they play where COVID-19 is concerned. And we particularly focused on the acute phase of COVID-19. When there's, you know, when that, all that damage is happening, when people have to go to the ICU, they can't breathe, they may even be having strokes, and all their attention is being paid on them. That's the acute phase. But we're going to be talking now as to what happens with those who survive the acute phase. And as you all know, many of these conditions linger. Uh, people have problems with breathing, problems with weakness and fatigue. Even mental, some people refer to mental fog, they're not able to think properly, they're not able to even remember simple names and simple words. So it is by no means over for many, many, many people. What can be done? We're going to address that. But before I hand over to him, I'm going to remind you about who he is and what he has accomplished. Dr. Anand Srivastana is the chairman and founder of the Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research, San Diego, California. He has also, also had held multiple roles, including a member of the National Research Institute in Japan. He is also has several roles in the University of California, San Diego, University of California, Irvine, University of California, Los Angeles, working on bone marrow transplantation, stem cells and neurology, stem cells, and uh, now COVID-19. So doc, thank you and welcome back to the show. Thank you, Anis, Dr. Davis, for having me in this wonderful show for Brain and Body Foundation. And uh, so nice meeting with you. And yes, last week it was wonderful talking with you about the COVID-19 and uh, probable remedy using the mesenchymal stem cell. So let's Absolutely. go for our next step of the talk. That's right. So let's move on to the next step. And again, it's fascinating that the Food and Drug Administration, our, which is equivalent to NAFDAC uh, in Nigeria, has given you full permission to use this therapy in individuals with COVID-19. So that's fantastic. I think we need more of that. So you, the screen, I've handed over control to you. So take it away. Thank you very much. And uh, so uh, I'm going to continue, maybe uh, if you allow me to go for our next, uh, next very important point that I was discussing that uh, what, what happens for those patients who came out from the COVID-19. And, uh, and we, we heard a lot now, and we have a lot of people telling that now they are out from the COVID infection, but still they are having a lot of problems. Their organs are compromised. They are unable to perform day-to-day -day, uh, work in proper manner. They lost their efficiency. And even sometimes you, you hear that person is coming out from the COVID-19 and he has all of, all of a sudden that person is having heart attack and, you know, so a lot of, lot of problems. So first, why it is happening like that? And second, how we may manage even these kind of patients using uh, stem cells. So the point is when COVID-19 is infecting you or a person, it's going, creating a lot of problems, pro-inflammatory pro cyting, cytokines and damaging the lung tissues. And it has a specific kind of life cycle inside the human where this virus goes and kill the cells during the multiplication. So basically, it enters inside the cell and multiply inside the cell, forms millions of virus inside the cell and raptures burst that cell and comes out and infect other cells. So a lot of scar, a lot of cell debris, okay, form. And those uh, lung is a highly circulated uh, organ of the body. So this cell debris, which is rapture and damage cells are now coming in the circulation blocking the uh, 
by small vessels, creating a lot of inflammation, sometimes clotting, okay, inside the blood vessels. And that causes the multiple organ. If it is going in kidney, blocking the kidney filtration, going to liver cells, damaging liver cells, and then blocking the uh, heart blood supplies, it, it can give you heart attack, clogging the arteries and veins, okay? And then if it goes to brain, then there's a brain stroke as well. So how to really manage this? So that's what I was uh, thinking to share wonderful uh, uh, slide. And let me share with you. Uh, okay. And just out of curiosity, are, are these injections or infusions that you give when you're given this treatment? Yes. So, so during that time also, and also during the time of uh, uh, our treatment, and and so, so during the time of treatment, we give stem cell and we neutralize the virus, which I explained in my uh, last week of talk, that how this particular stem cell may manage and neutralize the virus and rescue the patient nicely. But once the patient is out because of a vaccine or maybe some other way. And if the organs are compromised and most of the time the elderly patient or the patient who has some kind of underlying situation like diabetes, hypercholesterol and all these things, those patients are also having even much problem. So uh, again, uh, this is <laughs> very complex to look like, but I'm going to explain in very simple manner. So just see, uh, patient is having COVID-19. So this is the COVID-19 coming to the lung, infecting lung, lung is damaged now, okay, because of this. And, and patient is now having COVID-19 problem. So uh, this is the lung dysfunction. And because of this rapture and all these things I'm telling, this is uh, coagulopathy means uh, clotting and all these things and clots are there. This therapy puts people back on the, on the road to, to recovery. Does it cause or stimulate the repair of lung damage? Does it cause or stimulate the repair of liver damage and all those things? Um, so that it, in other words, does it reverse, help the body reverse some of the damage? So we're going to come back and um, let's, let's address that. Okay. All right. So folks, we will be back shortly. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Shivastava. I was talking about how mesenchymal stem cell therapy, stem cells, can help the body not only recover, but regenerate and repair damaged tissue. So, Doc. Uh, thank you again. So, I was talking that uh, how it blocks and neutralizes all these cytokines and what are the effect of bad effect of the virus, even the person is out from the effect of the virus, but the organs are still compromised because of the bad effect of the virus cytokines and all these things. So the question is here, how this mesenchymal stem cell therapy may repair all those damaged organs or compromised organ of a patient who suffered with COVID-19, but not having the COVID-19 right now. And particularly those patient who has underlying condition like old patient or maybe diabetes or kidney problem or liver problem. So let's see. So when you inject the mesenchymal stem cell to these patient who has compromised organs, so what it does, as I told, it goes and first, so just think like three, three step. It works in three step, one, two, and three. What is the first step? So when, when these organs are compromised, it's because of the compromised and damaged tissues, it still has the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine. Because of the damage, the inflammation is still going on there. Okay. Not because of the virus now but because of the damage of that particular organ or cell. And yeah. <clears throat> inflammatory cytokines are going there and trying to take out that portion. So acute inflammation is still there. So what does first step, mesenchymal stem cell goes and stop that inflammatory cytokines 
to further damage the this damage organ which is already there damaged okay so it stop the further damage of organ blocking these cytokines then this mesenchymal stem cell also cross talks with this damaged cells of the organs and secretes those particular kind of molecules which enhance the regeneration of this damage organ you okay. see so 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 first blocking the bad cytokine second secreting the neutralizing cytokine which can neutralize this pro inflammatory cytokine by secreting the anti inflammatory cytokines mm -hmm. and this third step it secretes those cytokines which enhance the regeneration of this damage portion of the organs to okay. bring these organs back to its function a normal function and so it works like three stages blocking neutralizing and enhancing the repair of the damage portion of the organ i see i see i see okay okay <laughs> so this is the way it repairs i see got it thank you so do you have again i know we asked about that for the uh, for the treatment in the acute phase do you have case studies or do you have evidences of people who have used it or you've given this treatment to and have shown significant maybe not 100% but significant recovery from the lingering and long term effects of covid-19 yes we we treated we started treating the patient and we have wonderful results coming out from that and particularly the like after covid-19 yes person is out of covid 19 but lung is still compromised like a lot of fibrosis in the lung mm -hmm. and other things but few few people has uh, like kidney problem and liver problem and uh, the diabetes uh, people has several other multiple fold of the problems because of that infection uh, so we see wonderful results after treating yes. them with the mesen chemical stem cell fantastic now do they come to you is there like a hospital they go to or where do they get this treatment yes. those we we have our as i told we have our hospitals uh, at different uh, places in the world and they come to hospital talk to doctor doctor evaluates everything there at the local hospital and uh, local jewish star hospital i will say uh, okay. and then they they get treatment and they are released and it's so simple you know like person is coming just evaluate their physical condition and then give the stem cells it and just go evening to their home so it's not like hospitalization and staying in the hospital for a longer period of time right right well then how about for those who are the, in the acute phase like you said send us a video the ones who are currently having the active covid-19 how do you in that case they can't walk up to you can they i mean they they probably yes they are uh, critical condition you are right so they are already uh, in the hospital and once they are in the hospital they they have positive covid-19 situation and then uh, we talk with the doctor treating doctor and then uh, as i told we have uh, us fda approval on the compassionate basis for emergency use so Uh, we just send the data of the patient immediately to FDA, and F US FDA is very quick. I would say they give us for immediately they return our request, and we can go and use stem cell to treat. That's those fantastic. Patients. That's fantastic. So, are you? How are you getting the word out? Because I'm sure a lot, lots of people at hospitals who would be interested in this as an option. I know there's the. the standard treatments which are called include remdesivir and uh, regeneral and the other hospital approved fda approved drugs um, how are you getting the word out with regards to this so people see that there's an option so uh, we have been on the uh, television news and newspapers and all the places and of course i published the papers related to this in academic uh, journals Mm -hmm. and uh, the wonderful people like you <laughs> who who really helps a lot to spread the word and helping the people people like uh, your foundation you know 
that uh, I know very well about uh, your foundation, particularly that it's wonderful and unconditionally helping a lot of people. Uh, so this is this is the great help we are getting uh, as a Jewish star member from the people like you and other media and social media. Well, absolutely. Well, well we're we're all, all about getting good the good word to people about what can help them. So yeah, that's. That's what that's what we do, but definitely people need to know about this. Uh, so it's it's we, we can we would like to help in any any little any little way that we can for sure. Um, so that's great. I mean, I think we need to have a lot more case studies that we can share with with other people because this these are long term benefit these long term effects. Sorry, uh, long term adverse effects are going to be around for a lot of people. I know I personally know quite a few people. Who have had this? Who are, are having to deal with these issues? Long-term issues. They've long passed the the, the COVID nineteen active phase of the COVID nineteen. They've been treated. They've recovered. The the levels of the COVID nineteen have have dropped to negligible levels, but they're still dealing with the effects of the disease. So it's very important that we can that's, that we can help them. All right, we're going to take a quick break now, and then we'll be right back. So stay tuned, folks. All right, welcome back, folks. We've been talking about this fascinating discovery of mesenchymal stem cells and how they work with COVID-19. Now, how about the topic that is very near and dear to my heart, which is, of course, sickle cell disease. Doc, how does this discovery work with sickle cell disease? So this is a wonderful story, in fact, and I started uh, the stem cell science with the notion to develop the, uh, the treatment for the blood-related disease, and mainly two blood-related diseases. That is, one is the sickle cell anemia, and another is thalassemia. And as we know, both are very genetic disease. So when we say genetic disease, it means we, can, we, we are very well knowing that this particular kid may have sickle cell disease or thalassemia. And now okay. just come on, sickle cell. And we know that sickle cell is blood-related disease. The globin gene has the mutation. That's what the, the blood is or RBC is not in the proper shape. It formed this sickle shape uh, like this and, and like this and clumps, okay? And, and uh, the kid uh, always has the problem and unable to carry the oxygen and load the oxygen. And, so need uh, continuous uh, blood transfusion and all these things. And it's a huge problem, uh, not only for uh, India, but for many other countries like your country as well. And then, so I was developing the gene therapy program for the sickle cell. And the idea was, is it possible to go inside the mother womb and change the gene then and there? So the, the baby is going to be healthy baby. So starting was not the stem cell science, the starting was the gene therapy because we were knowing that the gene is the problem. Right. So, and, and depending on the human genome program, we knew now what is the correct sequence of the globin gene. So why not? Because when we, we know that this baby may have this sickle cell disease, so why not go and change the gene inside the developing baby, okay? And that's what I did. I showed that, yes, you can change the, uh, or insert the gene in developing baby. Even, even I went and, and, and develop a technology where you inject gene to mother. It circulate all the way to mother circulation and goes to the, cross the placenta barrier and goes in the fetus and integrate, may integrate the gene there. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to do any surgery, nothing. But saying all these things, yes, it is very fascinating. It is very good to talk, but at laboratory condition. When you come in the real life, it is very difficult and complex. And immediately I realized it is complex, though it is very good if you can do, but complex. How to really go for the masses? Because you are not going to treat one or two people. You, your aim is to treat millions of the sickle cell disease. So Absolutely. then the idea of the came in my mind that stem cell is the master cell of the body. 
our each and every sing what is body body is the combination of organ blood is also a kind of organ so when the stem cell is making each and every single organ it must be making blood also okay so that's the idea came in my mind and i brought the stem cell at university of california san diego medical school and started to culturing or cloning these cells in the lab to see if i can make millions of the cells from few cells so at least i have the cell bank and then i ask second question is it possible to differentiate these stem cells into the blood cells because our target to make a good blood for the sickle cell disease right, right. so again i will say that i was fortunate enough that i started in 2000 20 year back story i am telling you so in 2000 and i first time reported in 2003 just in 3 years that is it it is really possible and i differentiated this stem cell into the blood kind of cell and then i published in 2003 4 5 and i successfully made the uh, red blood cell uh, that is the rbc using the stem cell and at this time point we are trying to generate this rbc in the uh, bio reactor to supply for the people who has uh, blood related problems so those are those are the stories but coming on the particularly on the sickle cell disease mm-hmm. so if we may use uh, you know that uh, still the people can do the bone marrow transplant uh, for the sickle cell disease and uh, the bone marrow transplant is nothing but the uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant and this is technical name but the normal way I, if i say layman term i can say the blood stem cell transplant so stem cell is specific to the blood we transplant those so those stem cell goes and that is specific for blood so it makes the new blood and you still have to use uh, immune immune suppressors for that don't they for the bone marrow yes. transplant okay yes you you need immune suppression but if you have good ma- matching mm-hmm. exact matching you don't need okay for immune suppression but generally yes you know you you use but the the, the stem cell which is we are making Missing we are energy. making yeah from the stem cell we are making o negative okay so you don't need to really match it or immune suppress it so so there is there is one way this is one way okay we have we have only one minute left okay just in one quick 30 second i will take so there is another way that if you use the stem cell and insert the globin gene in this and then transplant this stem cell so that now it has correct globin gene inside and it goes and give entire new blood cells so yeah. you can really manage this stem cells or oh, sorry the sickle cell and and of course uh, this is very developing science i'm talking but uh, few people has been treated and few few reports are coming very encouraging report so that's what, that's what i wanted to tell you okay and i understand that you're building a center in, in india for specifically to bring this treatment to sickle cell disease patients in india is that is that correct you are right with the prime minister of india yes huge stem cell sickle cell hospital excuse me building a sickle cell hospital is going to use this particular treatment for that you're right you're right that's, that's fantastic now i know you, you it sounds really technical and you try to break it down and i'm sure we'll have to watch this a couple of times to really understand what it's all about but it is very very promising and like you like we discussed we need to get this thing out to the masses it has to be less complicated it has to be something that can be used in primary care centers as well as the teaching hospitals or the tertiary hospitals so it's very very important we're out of time now doc i just want to say thank you so much again for your time for sharing your wisdom and your discovery with us hopefully this will benefit a lot of people we appreciate it thank you mr dr david it's, it's honor to be with you today thank you sir have a good day
All right, folks, thank you for joining us again. Remember to stay safe. And of course, you can catch previous videos, previous uh, episodes of this, of your Healthy Your Hands on our website, the Brain and Body Foundation, and also on the NTA website. So God bless, and we will see you again next week.